Merhabalar, tekrar hoş geldiniz. Dear guests, welcome. Bugün çok özel bir masterclass etkinliği gerçekleştiriyor olacağız. Fransız gastronomi ve dünya mutfağının harika klasiklerini harmanlayan, dünyanın dört bir yanından Le Cordon Bleu mezunları tarafından oluşturulmuş Le Cordon Bleu'nun en yeni yemek kitabı olan A Culinary Journey yayınlandı. Her ay uluslararası bir Le Cordon Bleu mezunumuz ile Ekinler Journey kitabındaki reçetesini online masterclass olarak gerçekleştireceğiz. Bu kitabımızın içindeki reçetelerin etkinlik serimizin detayları için bizi takipte kalın. Sözü Le Cordon Bleu Türkiye Direktörü Defne Ertan Tüysüzoğlu'na vermek isterim. We will be doing a very special masterclass today. Le Cordon Bleu's newest cookbook, A Culinary Journey, that blends the wonderful classics of French gastronomy and international cuisine, has been created by the contribution of Le Cordon Bleu alumni from all over the world. Every month, we will do a series of online masterclasses with international Le Cordon Bleu alumni, featuring a recipe in A Culinary Journey book. Stay tuned for the details of our A Culinary Journey recipe event series. I would like to give the floor Değerli misafirlerimiz, gene bir online çevirim içi etkinlikte beraber olmaktan çok mutluyuz. Elbette bu kısıtlamaların kaldırılıp üniversite kampüsünde Le Cordon Bleu'de sizinle buluşmayı da heyecanla bekliyoruz. Arkadaşlarımın belirttiği gibi gene bir culinary journey kitabından aldığımız farklı reçetelerle e, uluslararası mezunlarımızla e, güzel bir etkinlik içine, içindeyiz. E, bugün de bizim misafirimiz aslında e, Guatemala'dan e, bir şefimiz. Sayın e, şef Jorge Jorge Lamport olacak. E, çok da e, daha önce de söylediğim gibi evet gerçekten bu Covid-19 dönemi boyunca e, biraz kısıtlamalar oluyor ama Uzaklarda yakın oluyor ve biz de e, bambaşka bir kıtadan, e, bambaşka bir mutfağa şu anda kendi evimize sokabiliyoruz. Onun için bu da bizim için mutlu bir e, an. Dear guests, uh, we are very happy to host you in another uh, online event. As mentioned by my friends, we are doing the recipes from a culinary journey, which is published Uh, 425th anniversary of uh, Le Cordon Bleu. And as you know, normally we are located in Ozean University campus in Istanbul. And we are very happy to host you through this Zoom event. And as always said, yes, uh, COVID-19 had brought us some difficulties, but on the other hand, with those online activities, we have the opportunity to host uh, a, some chefs from all around the world. And we are very happy to uh, host today uh, Chef uh, Jorge Jorge Lamport from Guatemala. And we are guests in his restaurant, Camille. And I would like to give the world back to my friends so that we can shortly start the event. I hope you'll enjoy the show. Bir duyuru yapmak isteriz. Le Cordon Bleu mezunu şef Jorge Jorge Lamport'un baharatlı tamal soslu mahi balığını evinizde hazırlayarak bizden Ekimler Journey kitabını kazanmak ister misiniz? Kitabı kazanmak için yapmanız gerekenler etkinlikte şef Jorge'nin şef Jorge ile birlikte yaptığınız ya da şefi takip edip etkinlik sonrası yaptığınız benzer reçeteyi fotoğraflayarak Instagram'da Le Cordon Bleu İstanbul ve Camille Cosina hesaplarını etiketlemek. Detayları chat kısmına yazacağız. Instagram sayfanızda gönderi ya da hikaye olarak paylaşırsanız fotoğrafı lecordonbleu.edu.tr mail adresine ulaştırırsanız hesabınız gizli ise göremiyoruz. Hesabınızın açık olması gerekmektedir. Aranızdan yapılacak bir çekilişle kitabımızı hediye ediyor olacağız. 3 Mart Çarşamba günü saat 12'ye kadar e, yarışmamız devam edecektir. Instagram'da paylaşım yapmayı ve bizleri etiketlemeyi unutmayınız. Detayları chatte yazacağız. Would you like to win the book A Culinary Journey from us? 
by preparing the Lecordum Legregated Chef Jorge, Jorge Lampard's Mahimai with spiced samosas recipe at your home. What you need is to do a photograph with similar recipe you made from the event, share it in your Instagram feed or story with tags of at Le Cordon de Istanbul and at Camille Cucina and send the photo to Le Cordon de at ozegin.edu.pr for us to see your post or story. Your Instagram profile needs to be public. Those who send the email of their story or post on the 3rd of March at 12 a.m. will be eligible to participate in the contest. Bugünün konuk şefi Le Cordon Le Paris Grand Diplom mezunu Şef Jorge Jorge Lamport bizlere Ekimler Journey kitabında bulunan baharatlı tamay soslu mahi balığı tarifini sunacak. Etkinliğimiz İngilizce olarak gerçekleşecektir. Zoom ekranınızda yer alan çeviri butonundan İngilizceyi seçerseniz İngilizce, Türkçe için seçerseniz Türkçe çeviriyi dinleyebilirsiniz. Sorularınızı chat kısmından bize iletebilirsiniz. Today's guest chef is Le Cordon Le Paris Grand Diplom graduate chef Jorge Jorge Lampard who present the Mahi Mahi with Spice Double Sauce recipe from a culinary journey book. Our event will be in English. If you choose English from the interpretation button on your Zoom screen, you can listen in English. If you choose Turkish, you can listen to Turkish translation. You can send your questions through the chat. Thank you, Chef, for accepting our event invitation. We are so glad to have you in this event. I would like to give the floor to you. Have a nice event. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be uh, a part of uh, the whole concept behind uh, what you're doing uh, based on, on, on the book celebrating 125 years of the school. Uh, I'm always very uh, uh, honored, very proud to have uh, been a student of the Cordon Bleu. It really uh, opened up my eyes to see uh, all the possibilities that, uh, that I had to uh, become a, a professional. Right? So this is a, a wonderful idea that you uh, are organizing these classes with uh, students uh, that appear in the book. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to uh, you know, being able to see some of the other classes, uh, especially some of the uh, your local uh, Turkish chefs that uh, appear in the book. Uh, so, you know, it's a great honor. It's it's a wonderful uh, celebration. Uh, and I'm really happy to be able to show you um, some of the techniques that I learned, how they evolved. Uh, I, I was at the school uh, more than uh, 25 years ago. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been, been working and cooking for a while. Uh, we were a restaurant for uh, almost uh, 19 years, 20 years, uh, and we've been uh, teaching also. So the the recipe that I uh, I made or that I worked on for the for the book is something based on a very traditional uh, recipe that we have here in Guatemala. Uh, the main ingredient uh, that I, I'm going to focus on today is the sauce, and really the the stars or, or the, the, the main flavors of the sauce are these two uh, different types of chilies. Uh, this is the chile huacu you know, and uh, the chile pasa. Now, we use them dried because you know there's a, a transformation uh, from this uh, when it's fresh to this when it's fried. The flavor changes, it becomes smoky. Uh, it's, it's a really wonderful uh, ingredient. So. The base of the recipe is the sauce. Uh, I'll talk a, a little bit more about it, but you can use the sauce uh, to pair with any other type of uh, protein, uh, chicken, uh, pork, beef, uh, but it's really nice with fish and seafood, which isn't it a traditional way to, uh, to work with it. So this pepper is not spicy at all. It's just a little bit smoky. And this pepper is slightly spicy sometimes. Uh, to give it a little kick, I have these smaller peppers, which are called uh, cobanero because of the region that they come from. And uh, this is going to spice it up a little bit. Now, 
the the base of the sauce, uh, the chiles, uh, a little bit of uh, onion, tomato, pepper. Um, then I have some roasted. I'll we'll see that in a moment. And also, this is uh, one of the big influences because uh, all of the uh, the ingredients that I just showed you are uh, originally from America. Um, but then we have the uh, the influx of the uh, the spice trade that came uh, uh, hundreds of years ago, and we we have uh, cinnamon, a little bit of uh, clove, yeah, and a little bit of allspice. See, yeah. so this is going to give uh, a certain sweetness, uh, a certain depth to the to the sauce. So to start off the sauce, I'm going to fire a roast. Uh, a pepper. Si puedes solo acercarlo. So, you know, this is going to roast directly on the flame. And then we have this as a result. You know, it's fire roasted. We peel it. We get a little bit of smoky flavor, uh, a little bit of sweetness as well from the pepper. So you can do that over coals. You could do it uh, in a salamander, in a broiler, uh, just any any way to uh, roast the skin and then be able to peel the, the pepper. Now, as additional ingredients, we also have sesame, you know, which I'm also going to roast in, in the pan, or, and pumpkin seed. So these are two very important ingredients uh, in many of the Guatemalan uh, sauces, right? which I'm also going to you know, just toast a little bit directly over the flame. Right? Now, to start things off, I have some uh, simple fish stock. If you were making it with uh, chicken, you could use uh, chicken stock. If it was uh, beef, it would be beef stock. And I'm gonna place the tomatoes, the peppers. These are the chile wake, without uh, seeds, without the stems. And also into that pot, I'm going to add some onions. Now, usually it's the type of uh, traditional recipes that there's not really a recipe to follow. You know, it's uh, it's done to taste. It's done uh, a little bit differently every time. So you can play around with the, the different ingredients, make it spicier. If you want uh, the notes of the cinnamon or of the clove to come out a little bit more, you could uh, add a, an extra piece. Uh, Let's get a okay, so I have the sesame seeds already roasted off. And also the pumpkin seeds. Okay. Now, everything that's uh, in the pot you know, just needs to cook until it's very tender. You know? So I'm going to cover it. And let that uh, steam for maybe uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just until everything is tender, especially the peppers, which are dried out. Uh, you have to let them uh, you know, get, get soft again. So uh, later on, uh, when we blend them, we get a very rich, uh, flavor, a very silky uh, texture. As you can see, you know, just typical uh, roasted uh, pepper, which is the base. Now, the tomato uh, for this recipe, uh, it's not roasted. We could also roast uh, the tomato, roast uh, the onion, but I want to balance out uh, the smoky flavors. So I'm going to get some of the smoke uh, 
from the, uh, the pepper and only the pepper, maybe a little bit from the, the dried chili. Um, so that's something you could do. You could roast all of the vegetables uh, or you could only uh, roast the tomatoes, the onions. Um, depends on what, what final flavor you want. So I'm gonna have some, some of the ingredients ready uh, for the base of the sauce. For this, I have the uh, cinnamon stick, just a small piece, the allspice, and the cloves. Now, some of the uh, sesame seed and the pumpkin seed, I'll be saving for the presentation. So we get that uh, texture, that extra burst of flavor at the end. Yeah. But it really gives a wonderful flavor to the sauce. You could uh, play around uh, with different types of seeds. You could also try adding uh, almonds uh, or walnuts, uh, even uh, maybe do a, a green version of the sauce uh, with uh, more herbs, uh, roasted uh, green tomatoes, and you could use pistachio uh, in the base. Now, there's also a special ingredient this time it's in the form of a paste, and it's uh, here we call it a chiote. Um, I think the uh, the term in English is anato. Uh, it, it gives a very pungent flavor. Um, it's almost like a sour orange, uh, uh, very very rich flavor. So it's also going to give it a wonderful color. It's used. Uh, in several uh, food products as a natural colorant, but it also has wonderful flavor. I'm also gonna have the, the pepper already to go in the blender. And this way, I'm just uh, gonna have to wait for the uh, onion, the peppers, the tomato uh, to cook down. Also the, the spiciness. Usually the sauce is not spicy at all, but I really enjoy uh, hot peppers. Uh, I like the spicy nut uh, notes that it gives you. So you could add, you know, uh, one, two, four different uh, little peppers to give it a little, uh, little extra kick. So I'm going to set this to one side. Now, usually you would combine uh, these base ingredients with maybe uh, a little fresh. Uh, Cilantro, yeah? and uh, for the recipe, I wanted to, uh, I don't want to lose the color and the fresh flavor of the cilantro. So I'm pulling it off to one side and it's going to help me with uh, the depth of color, texture, and we're going to have a green sauce uh, that I'm going to make right now. And also uh, a cilantro uh, and coriander oil. Uh, just to give it a little bit more uh, balance, a little bit more uh, color and flavor. So the base of the sauce is almost ready. In a few minutes, we'll, we'll blend that. Uh, and I'd like to make, well, first, uh, the process how we made the oil. So for the oil, I have some coriander seeds. Uh, it just gives the cilantro uh, a little extra uh, kick. So these have been slightly roasted, uh, the same way we roasted the sesame seeds. And I want to blanch uh, the cilantro. So I'm gonna pass it through some uh, boiling water for a few seconds, then some ice cold water. You have to strain it uh, very, very well. Uh, you can use a paper towel just to get all of the excess uh, moisture out of it. And then I'm gonna blend it with uh, some oil. You wanna uh, use a neutral flavored oil, uh, maybe avocado uh, works fine, uh, or uh, a very light uh, tasting olive oil. Yeah. Nothing too, too rich. Now, this takes a little patience. 
uh, you don't really use a lot of it in the dish, but uh, it's uh, very colorful and it gives a, a wonderful perfume to the to the sauce. So I'm just gonna uh, pop this into the boiling water for a second. Just a few seconds, you're going to see the leaves turn a darker shade of, uh, of green. And then a moment in uh, some very cold water. And then the exact same process uh, needs to be done for the uh, green sauce, for the cilantro sauce. So I already have uh, some of the cilantro uh, already cooked down for the sauce. And this is the process for the oil. So for the oil, you want to make sure and dry it as much as possible. You now you can press it out in a towel. And then you can refer, refrigerate this oil for maybe a week, uh, 10 days. Okay. So I want to blend that down. Be patient. It's, uh, you have to blend it for a while to really get the, the essence of the uh, cilantro and the sesame or the uh, coriander into the oil. Okay. Uh, it seems like a lot of work for just this little bit of uh, oil that we're going to get. But the result is really uh, very special. Yeah. So you let this uh, sieve through uh, a very fine colander. So you get just the essence of the coriander and the uh, cilantro. Yeah. And then uh, I have some of the oil here um, already put through the colander, colander you know, or the, the fine sieve. And we have this wonderful uh, green oil that we're going to use to uh, flavor the, the final plating of the, the fish. You know? So I don't know if you have uh, any questions so far. Um, I'm roast, you know, I'm uh, cooking down the tomato, the onion. Uh, with the dried peppers uh, for the sauce. I have uh, the pumpkin seed, sesame seed, uh, the spices, the cinnamon clove, uh, allspice, uh, and the roasted pepper. Uh, just waiting for the rest of it to cook down. Also, uh, I prepared uh, the oil just to show you the process. And uh, the exact same process has to be done just the blanching of the uh, uh, cilantro uh, for the next step, which is making the green sauce. Um, now, the roast peppers, you know that you just have to let them cool down a little bit, uh, get all of the skin off, uh, get all of the seeds out of the pepper. Uh, it's very important because uh, it gives us an astringent uh, flavor. Uh, the same was done with uh, dried roasted peppers. Uh, you have to take out the stems and remove all of the seeds before uh, you can use them because you want to be able to control the, the flavor a little bit uh, more precisely. So I don't know if anyone has a, a question so far. Yes, I think you explained everything very well, Chef. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. So 
the base for the sauce, the tomato, the, the peppers, they still have to cook down a little bit. I'll, I'll show you uh, how that's going in, in one. And then I can make the, the green sauce, the cilantro sauce. Now, since it's fish, um, I, I really wanted to add a little bit of citrus flavor. So I have uh, the lemon juice or our uh, limones, uh, some tangerine juice. And you could really use any base, uh, any citrus base that you wanted. It's just a little bit to uh, brighten up the flavor in contrast with the fish uh, and with the sauce. So for the cilantro sauce, we need the uh, cilantro that's been blanched and uh, strained. And here I'm adding the water, the lemon juice, and uh, the tangerine juice. I also need a little bit of uh, olive oil. Some salt. And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, xanthan gum. Um, just a tiny bit. Uh, it's just more to stabilize the sauce so that it doesn't uh, bleed out uh, onto the plate. Uh, so a little bit of xanthan gum. Which is optional. If you don't have xanthan gum, you can just uh, blend it and use it as is. I have to blend it a little bit more, but I want to have a, a taste, see if I need to add a little bit more uh, salt. Uh, because it is very acidic, it's very bright. So just a pinch more of salt. I'll show you the sauce in one moment. And you can make this sauce with uh, several types of, uh, of herbs, or you could even use uh, maybe fresh kale, spinach, uh, arugula. Uh, it comes out very well with basil. Uh, basil with the lime juice and tangerine juice works very well. Okay. So, I have a very bright colored, very fresh sauce that I'm gonna use to accompany the uh, very rich uh, and smoky pepper sauce. Okay. So that's done. Chef, we do have a question if I may ask. Yes. Uh, instead of annatto pastes, because it's not going to be available everywhere, what would you suggest? Uh, there's nothing that's really going to uh, be a, a, a straight substitute for it. Uh, you could maybe uh, add a dash of uh, uh, uh, maybe like a sour orange, uh, uh, just to you know give it an extra uh, pungent flavor. Uh, you could maybe add uh, just a little bit of uh, uh, smoked paprika, just something that, uh, that's going to push the flavors a little bit further. Um, it doesn't give a, a sweetness to it. it. It looks like it's going to be sweet. It's more uh, sour than, than anything else. 
Um, but you, you can play around with the, the idea, uh, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, uh, orange uh, uh, marmalade, marmalade uh, or orange uh, jelly, but just uh, a half a teaspoonful, uh, just to give it a little bit more uh, depth of flavor uh, when you're trying it. You, know? uh, you, you usually don't see it in paste form uh, outside of uh, uh, Guatemala and Mexico. You might be able to to find dried uh, anato seeds, uh, so it's maybe something you could look into. But if not, you can just uh, uh, mark it as, uh, as something optional for the songs. Okay. So let's take a look at our the base for the songs. You can see the, the peppers have cooked down. The tomato is very, very tender, as well as the onion. Yeah. Okay. So I think I've done this. You can also see that rich, dark color just from the, the stock that is also cooked down. So uh, it's a very important detail because we're... Uh, making the flavors uh, uh, a little bit more intense. Uh, I started off with uh, 500 uh, milliliters or 400 milliliters of, of stock, and it's cooked down to uh, 50. Right? So it's, uh, it's not just cooking them in water, which is uh, sometimes the, the traditional method. It's just cooked in water, and, and then uh, the sauce is stewed or cooked down with uh, different types of, of uh, meat. Uh, so in this case, the whole process is very simple. Uh, I I think that you you should be able to adapt uh, the idea of the sauce uh, fairly well uh, because I I've, I've never been to uh, to Turkey. I've had a chance to. Uh, taste some of the, the Turkish cuisine outside of uh, Turkey, uh, and I think it's wonderful. You know, it's uh, it's very rich in flavor. So this uh, the base of the sauce, the, the roasted peppers, uh, the onion. Uh, for this time, uh, for this sauce, I didn't want to add any garlic, uh, so that it, it was a little bit cleaner. But you could add a little bit of uh, uh, roasted garlic to it. Now, I want to blend the the sauce with a little bit more of the, the fish stock. And after it's blended, I'm going to strain it and then just let it uh, cook down a little bit. Uh, I want the, the sauce to uh, take a while on the, on the flame. Uh, you don't want it to reduce uh, or to thicken up uh, too quickly. So this way, the flavors continue to intensify. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm going to blend the, the base of the red sauce, the chili sauce. And then we're going to strain it. And then uh, straight back to the fire. Now, usually for this sauce, uh, if you lo look into, uh, just to see where the inspiration comes from, uh, this is traditionally used uh, to make a tamal. A tamal is uh, based with uh, corn masa. Uh, it's uh, dried corn that's cooked uh, cooked down with, how do you say it? Well, it's cooked down and then uh, it's peeled, it's, uh, it's milled. Uh, and then this sauce goes into that uh, like corn dome with uh, different types of, of meat, uh, uh, roasted peppers, uh, some uh, green olives, sometimes uh, prunes, uh, 
uh, or raisins, but it's something that's very traditional uh, during the whole year, but especially uh, in the month of December. Yeah? Um, it's then wrapped in two different types of leaves and steamed uh, for a couple of hours. So uh, this is a very traditional way to uh, make some of our, uh, our Guatemalan sauces. Um, and it's all almost like making a type of uh, curry. So I want to strain the sauce and then it'll go back onto a very low flame, which gives me a little time to uh, finish off uh, some of the accompaniments to the fish. And then basically we just have to cook the fish. Now, if your sauce is a little uh, thick, at, at the beginning, you can add a little bit more water to blend it. Yeah. And if it's a little thin uh, or doesn't have enough consistency, don't worry because once we uh, put it on the flame and it starts cooking down, it'll pick it up again. So, just to show you the consistency of the sauce, you know, it's already fairly thick, so be careful not to. Uh, put it over a very high heat. I'm just going to simmer this for a few minutes before I season. Okay. Now, uh, the traditional method for serving this, as, as I told you, is uh, uh, in a tamal. So it's uh, a corn dough with uh, this sauce, with uh, different types of, uh, of meats, all wrapped in leaves. But we also have some traditional uh, ingredients that uh, usually accompany these types of uh, stews or uh, recados, which we call them. So I have a couple of ingredients that I'm going to use here that maybe you haven't seen. Yeah? So one of the, the ingredients that I'm going to use in very small quantities is the loroco. Yeah? So this is a flowering uh, edible bud. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of strange because I already have some cleaned up here. Um, it smells kind of like white truffles. Um, it has a very uh, intense uh, aroma, but then the flavor is sweet, but um, almost like the, the white truffle, uh, it has uh, a good flavor, but it also has a very rich uh, aroma. So as you're eating them, uh, it sort of comes up into your uh, your nose when uh, when you eat them. So that's one of the ingredients. And then I have two different types uh, of similar vegetables. Uh, this is called uh, whiskey, you know, and this is called uh, perulero. Uh, the perulero it's very uh, it's very different. Uh, it's based in our region. Uh, you know, it's, it doesn't go on to the rest of uh, America. And uh, this is uh, called, uh, you call it in English, chayote. Uh, 
Um, so this is a little bit more uh, typical uh, for other countries in the region. Uh, it, it does have a different flavor. And uh, the main visual difference anyway is, you know, one is green, the other one is uh, almost uh, pure, pure white. You know? And the last uh, ingredient uh, is the pacaya. Now, this is uh, the flower from a, a, a variety, variety of palm that we have in Guatemala. Um, it, uh, I asked uh, people if they knew what it was uh, yesterday on our Instagram. And especially this one, it's so thick that it looks like almost uh, like a year, of, uh, a year of corn. You know, this is corn, this is the pacaya. So for the pacaya, I want to open it up. Huh? This is a larger one than, than what I have cooked down. And uh, I have one here that's been cooked down already. So this is just uh, blanched in water with a little bit of salt. Uh, just wanted to show you something uh, a little different. And then I'll show you the traditional uh, or two or three of the accompaniments that I use for the recipe in the book. Okay. So for the peruleros, I just want to peel them. Uh, it's not uh, turned. You know? or like the classical turned vegetables, but a little bit of an inspiration from that, that technique. And I'm just gonna cook this in a little bit of boiling water with salt. Now, instead of this ingredient, you could try, uh, though it might seem a little strange, uh, you could try using pears. You know? uh, a fairly ripe uh, pear, uh, just cooked in a little bit of water with, uh, with a little bit of sugar. You know? um, it's, uh, it seems like it's going to be very sweet when you uh, smell it, when you uh, uh, see the uh, the form, the, the shape, and when you feel the texture, but it's it's not really sweet. But maybe you could use pears. Uh, if you wanted something starchier, you could use uh, potato, which would be fine. So I'm just gonna cook these down a little bit with some water and salt. Now. I really enjoyed uh, working with traditional flavors, but then using them in maybe non-traditional uh, ways or adding uh, different ingredients that you wouldn't normally see with this type of, uh, of sauce, especially. So I want to have the, the main accompaniments ready before I put the, the fish on the flame. You know? So I have uh, a few, King oyster mushrooms. And for the king oysters, I just want to split them in two. Lengthwise. Give them a few decorative uh, cuts on the inside. Yeah. I'm just scoring them so you see those cuts. Once they're seared and a little bit of butter, okay? So, you know, just these simple little cuts to decorate the, the king oyster on the inside a little bit. Now, you could use uh, olive oil. I'm gonna be using butter for everything else except the, the green sauce. So I wanna add a little bit of butter to a pan. And I'm going to uh, place the mushrooms uh, cut side down first. 
So I get a good uh, dark color on the inside. Now, at the same time, I'm going to saute some of the goroko. And instead of goroko, you could use uh, asparagus tips or just the asparagus uh, cut down in very uh, small slices. And it's going to give you that uh, sort of like almost bitter freshness that the uh, loroco has uh, without the, uh, the same punch and flavor, but it should work very well. Now, also with the loroco, no? I'm going to do this exact same process with these pacayas. Now, uh, this is going to be a, a little bit more difficult to substitute. Um, you could uh, maybe use a second variety of mushroom. Uh, there's a mushroom called enoki mushroom that uh, has that very uh, same uh, like thinness. Uh, it looks uh, almost like uh, it's going to swim away. You know? Okay, so this maybe don't try and substitute uh, flavor wise, but maybe you could uh, find that some something that looks similar. You know, doesn't have to have the same taste. It's just a little decoration. Uh, the pakaya is a little bit bitter, so uh, I just I'm just gonna add a few strands of it to to my plate. Okay, so a little butter for the mushrooms, a little butter for the loroco. Okay. And the cooking of the loroco, I think it should be fairly quick. No? You just want to, you know, maybe for 20 seconds, 30 seconds. You see them turn a darker shade of green. Okay. And they're done. You know, it's it's fairly uh, delicate. I don't want to overcook them. Okay. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the pakaya. Now the pakayas, they can take the heat a little bit longer. Also, a little bit of salt. Okay. You know what it does? Want to let them just fairly brown a little bit. Okay, just want to check on my mushrooms. Still have a little bit ways to go. And also, I want to season the sauce. Now, here you see some of the uh, when when I was. Uh, at the school, uh, the, the Cordon Bleu in Paris, uh, it was still very, very uh, classical cuisine. So uh, a lot of butter, a lot of flavor. And I'm going to finish off my sauce with butter, which is not traditional, but it gives it a beautiful rich, richness, a beautiful texture. I just want to taste uh, the sauce. I haven't added uh, any salt to it yet. But I want to see how, how it feels, how it tastes, how sour it is, how sweet it is. Before I add any salt, you don't need to add pepper, only the salt, because of all of the spice that it has. You know? okay. So the mushrooms, done on one side, I'm going to put them over and just let them cook a little bit on the opposite side, you know? okay. 
So in that same pan, off the flame, I'm going to have my pacaya, doloroco, and with uh, the presentation, you know, I, I'm going to try and make it simple, but it has a lot of elements. So uh, I don't want to take the focus off of the fish and the sauce, but I want to add a little bit more texture, a little bit more color. So you can add uh, different types of ingredients. Remember, the, the main uh, theme of the uh, recipe is the sauce. Um, so have fun with the, the sauce. You know? Okay. So mushrooms off of the, the fire and I want a larger pan for my fish. Now, in this case, I'm using some uh, local, local caught uh, dorado. Uh, you, uh, uh, in English, they call it maki maki or a dolphin fish. You can really use any type of uh, fresh fish that you, you uh, wanted to. Uh, I think the sauce would go very well with uh, tuna, uh, snapper, uh, even something like uh, uh, grilled sardines, something that, that would be smoky, like the grilled whole uh, sardines would be uh, wonderful, I think. So a little salt and pepper. This is really to taste. You know, just a little bit on both sides. Okay. And I'm just going to let the pan warm up for uh, a few seconds more. Right. Now, the fish, when I let it uh, rest uh, towards the end, right, it's very important to take it off the plane let it rest for uh, just a couple of, uh, of minutes, maybe, uh, before you, you sauce it. Okay. So, some butter for the fish. Then I'm going to cook it for maybe uh, two and a half minutes per side before uh, flipping, flipping them over uh, and letting them rest for a minute. So now I also have, you know, when um, when I was asked to submit a recipe for for the book. Uh, it's it's very difficult to think, you know, what would I like to, to share with uh, uh, with the Cordelon Blue? What, you know, uh, what have I learned after so many years of cooking? And uh, it seems complicated uh, now with all of the additional ingredients that, that I'm adding to it. But, you know, the, the base is so simple. You know, um, when you think about it, it's just a, a very good sauce uh, uh, done, uh, uh, you know, cooked with care, created very carefully so that um, the balance of, of flavors is correct. Um, but, you know, I, I was very happy to uh, be able to showcase uh, flavors that are typical to my country, but uh, done with techniques that I still use after uh, more than 25 years of uh, having uh, finished the, the, the Cordon Blue in Paris. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very special, a, a wonderful way to uh, celebrate the, uh, 
the legacy of the of the school. Now, one of well, the next next to last uh, ingredient that I'm going to use uh, before plating, I just some um, peeled uh, heirloom tomatoes, some peeled uh, cherry heirloom tomatoes that I'm going to toss in a little bit of butter, uh, some salt. No. I want to lower the temperature of the, the pan for the fish a little bit. And Now, I'd love to, uh, when, when you share your, your photographs, uh, your recipes, um, I, I really enjoy seeing when the students adapt to uh, ingredients that they have at home or, or they, uh, the flavors or ingredients that they wanted to, to add uh, to the dish. So, you know, the most, most important thing is, uh, you know, just be inspired by uh, different foods, different dishes that you, you taste. But when you cook them, make them your own, make them special. Now the peruleros are ready. So the fish goes off for one second. So I try to keep it as simple as possible. That's why if you, you see the book or the recipe that was given to you, uh, the sauce. Remember, the sauce is the base. But I also got a little bit nervous, and I wanted to, to make a pretty dish for, for the book. So some of the additional elements, you know, uh, they're there for flavor. They're there for color. So I just want to brown the butter a little bit and get them a little bit caramelized, the peruleros. Okay. And then here I just have some, uh, you know, sweet corn that was uh, cooked with a little bit of water and salt. Uh, these small little uh, segments. Sweetness, a little bit of color to the final presentation. Yeah. So some of that roasted flavor just by torching them. The fish has been cooking a little bit, even though the pan is off the heat. You know, these, these heavy pans retain the heat very well. I'm going to take them off of the pan for one second. Okay. 
Okay, perulero, ready. And I'm just gonna put some of the uh, additional ingredients on the, the flame for just one second to let them uh, warm up. Yeah. Now, to finish off the sauce, butter. Yeah. Now, it's just, I think it's 40 grams, 50 grams. Uh, you could add a little bit more. Just be careful not to oversaturate uh, the sauce because you don't want the butter running out or uh, bleeding away from the rest of the ingredients. Yeah? It's just to give it a little bit more richness. Okay. All of that is ready. The sauce. And be generous with the amount of sauce, you know? Uh, it really is important to the whole dish. Uh, you know, even the, the, the fish would be uh, smaller. Uh, it would be a wonderful uh, base just to serve with uh, vegetables. You don't even uh, need all of the additional ingredients. Okay. So, another little go. Now, remember the pacayas? It's something that wasn't in the, the recipe. Just, you know, something to add a little bit more uh, movement on the plate, a little bit more texture. I'm gonna have just one small piece of the uh, perulero, just to add it on. Now, the green sauce, and I like how it looks plated directly next to the red sauce, the chile sauce. Okay. Now, I have some of the oil, yeah? and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing because I like how it gives you a second green hue to the plate. You know? You know, it's sort of like it's, you control how uh, that uh, green sauce uh, works out into the rest of the, the ingredients. Now, I also have some additional pumpkin seed. And a little bit more sesame. Now, the tomato, it's just to add a little touch of color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can make it as simple or as complicated as you wanted because the traditional uh, plating for this, this type of sauce would be just uh, the piece of uh, chicken or beef that was stewed uh, with the sauce, uh, rice and uh, corn uh, tortillas. So it's a little bit more elaborate, but uh, you know, I wanted to show you some uh, different ways, uh, different elements, but nothing that's really going to take away from that 
big strong flavor of the, the sauce. Okay. It looks so, delicious. Thank you. I, I wish to just not with it's not just seeing but to be able to taste. But for See, that, I probably know, you I should know. be coming to uh, Turkey, visit Le Cordon Bleu Istanbul. Well, ho hopefully soon. Uh, I, I really would uh, would enjoy that. It's it's on my uh, my uh, top top three uh, places I, I have to visit that I have to uh, I want to spend a while there and and, uh, and get to know uh, your cuisine. But uh, just the. Uh, the base of the flavor, when, when you do make it at home, if you're using spicier chilies, uh, you can substitute, uh, you could use less of those spicy chilies and add a little bit more of the roasted pepper just to help uh, balance it out. Yes, okay. let's see if there are any questions. Dear, dear guests, you can write your questions if you have any. Meanwhile, uh, I have to say it's very inspiring. And also, Chef, uh, it's very important what you said about using the own ingredients, you know, learning the techniques from yeah. Le Cordon Bleu, but adapting them to the uh, domestic ingredients about the local ingredients, that's actually the key. And I think it's inspiring for all of our students. That, you know, how yeah, should I, they be looking? Yeah, I, I think it's a wonderful way to uh, look at things because, um, you know, it's uh, the, the whole system of how uh, the Cordon Bleu teaches. Um, they are very gracious with how they uh, share their knowledge, uh, how they provide all of the ingredients. So when I came back uh, from, from France uh, to Guatemala, uh, I, I couldn't find... Uh, many of the ingredients that we use at school. So uh, it was almost uh, a mandatory, or I was obliged to uh, adapt the techniques to different ingredients. And I think uh, I, I still do cook, uh, you know, some of the classic uh, French recipes that I learned, but there are so many uh, fun variations uh, depending on the time of season um, or, or the type of uh, produce that you have. Um, like I said, this is a traditional sauce for uh, red meat or for chicken, but it goes wonderful with, uh, with seafood. Um, just the, the whole process of uh, the, the mix of, of techniques uh, with the traditional cuisine and the, the inspiration from the classic French. Uh, I think uh, many of the students probably uh, already do cook that way without really thinking about it because... Uh, the, the classic technique is it just shows you how to use uh, good ingredients. So uh, I think that's, uh, you know, that's uh, a standard. That's something that has to happen with uh, all of your students. Yes. Thank you very much, Chef. That was wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm very, you know, very honored to, to have been a part of it. Uh, I, I hope, uh, you know, to be able to, to participate as a, uh, as a student uh, in your upcoming classes, uh, especially when, uh, when uh, your, your students from Turkey that are in the book uh, or chefs that are in the book uh, showcase some of their flavors. Uh, so thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, Chef. It was a pleasure watching you. Hopefully you can cook it sample as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your participation. If you would like to watch this event again, please visit our YouTube channel. And we are looking forward to seeing our March at Culinary Journey Masterclass event. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.